My uni professor told me one line that changed everything. He said engineers don't ask for jobs, they offer their services. Today I'm gonna show you how to flip that mindset and turn your CV into a mini service proposal so you can land your first structural engineering job in Australia even with zero local experience. I get messages every week from engineers who can't land their first job. So they're new graduates, overseas engineers, and sometimes both like I was in the beginning. And if you are one of them, you are stuck in a trap because most firms won't hire you without experience. But how do you get experience if no one will hire you? It's like trying to join a gym and being told to come back when you were fit. I know it makes no sense, so that's why we're going to cheat the system, legally, and I'll show you how. And here's the shift. Your first goal isn't get the job. Your first goal is get the interview. And to get that interview, you must stop asking for a job and start offering your services. You need to shift your mindset from, I'm looking for a job, to how can I help this company? And that's the key. So let's talk about the services and skills they actually want from you. So what services can you offer as a new graduate or an overseas engineer? Since this is for your first job, or at least your first job in Australia, no one is going to expect you to have leadership or team management skills. Don't worry about that right now. They really just care about three main things. Number one, your structural design skills. This is the most important one by far because you're applying for a designer role, not a management or anything like that. It's a designer role, so most of your day is designing structures. And you don't need years of experience to prove you can do this. But you do need the fundamentals because if you don't know the basics, they might as well just hire my neighbor's dog. Was that a bad joke? Yeah, cut that out, yeah. They might as well just hire anyone without a degree. This is how you show them you're not just there to get experience. You are there to contribute to the company's growth. After all, it's a business. And you can't fake this part. People can tell if you really understand what you're talking about or if you're just repeating words you've memorized. So your technical skills matter and they matter a lot. Take Sajintan, for example, he's inside our Bang Lab community and he struggled for months to get his first job, but he just landed one in Adelaide and his interview was full of technical questions and he nailed it. He told us it was because all of the questions were things he had already practiced and learned inside the Bang Lab program. If you're interested in preparing like that, I'll put a link to Bang Lab in the description. When you truly get the basics, it's not about passing a test. Your confidence jumps in the interview. You're not sitting there praying that they don't ask you a tough question. So you feel calmer and you perform better. Skill number two is clear communication. This is skill is critical. As a structural engineer, you're not going to be sitting alone at your computer all day. Or maybe you will. Anyway, you have to talk to your team members, you have to explain your design to architects and builders, you have to speak with clients. If your communication is confusing, people can make mistakes. And in engineering, mistakes can be expensive and dangerous. So you must be able to get your ideas across clearly. Now, a lot of people, especially from overseas, worry about their accent. I have an accent, as you can tell, and that's totally fine. It's not about your accent, it's about your clarity. And here's a quick test. If you're talking to people and they're always asking you to repeat yourself, that's a sign. If they look confused when you speak, it's a sign you should work on your communication. If they need subtitles for your real life, slow down. I'm not a communication coach, but something that really helps me is to read a book out loud. Really emphasize the words you're reading, like I'm doing right now. Practice speaking slowly and opening your mouth. You need to be clear, not perfect. Skill number three, willingness to learn and be proactive. This is about your attitude. First of all, you need to be humble. 
show you're ready to learn. A good friend of mine runs an engineering office in Brisbane and he told me that he recently interviewed two candidates who were very strong technically, but he didn't hire them. And when I asked why, he said they both came across as arrogant and just not coachable, not trainable. And the worst part is that they probably had no idea. Think about it, this is the kind of feedback no one will ever give you. An employer will never email you back and say, Hey, just letting you know we didn't hire you because you seemed arrogant. That's not gonna happen, so you never hear it, but it costs you. So here's a practical tip. Practice recording yourself. Before your interview, just get your phone and record yourself answering common questions out loud. Watch it back, listen to your tone, check your face, posture, and poses. If it feels a bit, I know everything, soften it. Say things like, I would start with or my approach would be. Now the other thing they look for is hunger. Do you actually want this job? Do you even like engineering? And your reason doesn't matter. Maybe you just hate your current job and an engineering job looks amazing compared to that. What matters is energy and effort. If they feel you don't care, you won't get that job simple as that okay so you've got the skills how do you prove it you start by turning your cv into a service proposal remember you're not asking for a job you're offering your services this isn't woo woo mindset stuff let's be real they know you're looking for a job they know you want work experience and mentorship, but it's all about how you frame the ask. Think dating apps. Everyone knows why you're there, but you still need a good profile. Your CV is your dating app profile. It's the document that show what you can do for them. But here's the problem. Your proposal might not even get read by a human. Most companies now use AI to filter resumes. That same friend of mine in Brisbane he told me he got over 160 applications for one graduate position. And he's a very small business. I can guarantee you he's not reading all 160 resumes. He's going to upload them all to an AI and ask it to select the candidates whose skills actually match what they're looking for. This means you must tailor your CV for every single company. You have to read their job ad, see the keywords they use, and make sure your resume clearly shows how your skills match their needs. And then once you pass the AI, your proposal needs proof. And this is your portfolio. And here's a secret. You don't need 10 big projects. You just need one project told well. It can be a uni project, a small internship task, or a real world project like the ones inside Bang Lab, Whatever it is, make it the best thing ever. Don't just list it, tell a story. Tell the story of a detail that you came up with, what was the problem, what was your process, what did you learn, and most important, match it to the company's needs. Show them you've already done the kind of work they do. So you have your service proposal and you've polished your portfolio, but so does everyone else. How do you actually get it in front of the right person? You have to choose a strategy. And here are four, starting from the least effective and ending with the most powerful. So strategy number one, you apply online. And this is the easiest way. You just click submit. But it also has the lowest response rate. You're just one of 160 applicants sitting in a folder. Use it, but don't rely on it. Apply, then move on to strategy two to four. Strategy number two, I call the smart networker. This is when you use email or LinkedIn, and this is where that dating analogy comes back. My mom taught me this when I was 13 years old. When you talk to a girl, say hi, introduce yourself, compliment her preferably on something she had a choice over like her dress or her shoes you don't go up to a stranger and ask her to marry you the same rules apply to linkedin and emails if you want a job build a connection first say hi introduce yourself mention something you genuinely like about their company or their work show what you do that matches with what they do just be yourself be cool and don't be weird Strategy number three, the standout approach. If 
you really want to stand out, this next one is for you. It's uncommon, but if you're not getting results, you have to do something unconventional. So you're going to record a short personalized video and send it to them. Say their name in the video, keep it under 60 seconds. So it's something like that. Hi Mitchell, I am a grad structural engineer in Brisbane. I was looking through your website and I really liked your work on this specific project. I've done similar work at uni and in a small project. I was wondering if we could do a 10 minute chat or a quick coffee this week. Boom, send it, send your resume and portfolio. Imagine the manager's reaction. He's gonna be like, whoa, this person actually took the time to record a video. I have to at least talk to them. This strategy is bold and that's why it works. I call this the standout approach because that's exactly what it does. Trust me, no one is doing that. It might feel a little uncomfortable, but that's the entire point. It works because it's so different and it shows you're willing to go the extra mile. Strategy number four, I call the old school approach. You can do what I did, walk right into their office and introduce yourself. This was my strategy because I had no local work experience and I wasn't getting any interviews. So I went old school. I walked into the offices and personally handed my resume to the managers and business owners. And that's how I got my first structural engineering job. This is the hardest strategy, but for small firms, it can be the most effective. Just be aware that most small offices are open plan so you talk to one person and everyone hears you so every conversation feels like a speech and i still remember the first time i said the word resume out loud and the whole office stopped and stared at me it was terrifying but it loosened me up and it's how i finally opened the door and just remember this won't work for big companies because they have hr gates and receptionists but for small businesses it can make all the difference. And one last tip for this one, choose a time when people aren't super busy. So don't show up at 9 a.m. on a Monday, mid morning or just after lunch is usually best. Okay, you used one of these strategies and you landed the interview, amazing. Now, how do you nail it? My best advice is to flip the script. You should be the interviewer, it means you lead the conversation. You're not just a student hoping for a chance. You are a professional offering your services. And the reason I say that is because if you lead the conversation, you can actually practice what you say in advance. You're not just waiting for unknown questions. Of course, you have to let them speak and ask you questions, but I'm assuming you have a little bit of common sense. So I'm gonna spoon feed you step by step get to the place, start like you're making a new friend, smile, shake hands, and don't be weird, very important, don't be weird. Then, when the time is right, show them your work. This is your moment. Don't just tell about your portfolio. Show them, have your project ready, organized with some notes and images. And here's the most important part. Tell them why your experience is valuable for what they do. Always connect it back to their company. Now, what happens when they ask you a hard technical question? You might not get the answer 100% correct and that's often okay. What they really want to see is your thought process. So clearly explain your work, your thinking and the steps you would take to find a solution. That is far more valuable to an employer than just memorizing an answer. And one last bonus tip, if you're nervous, Practice, practice in front of a mirror, practice with a friend, practice until your words just flow automatically. Now let's talk about rejection. Even if you do everything right, you will get rejected. It's just part of the game. Most people just move on, but I want you to see rejection as free coaching. When a company tells you no, send a polite email back and ask for feedback. Sometimes you will be ignored and that's fine, but sometimes you will get a piece of golden feedback that helps you nail the next interview. See these rejections not as a waste of time, but as a learning activity that gets you closer to your goal. I can guarantee you the person you are on your 10th interview is going to be much better 
than the one you wore on your first. And finally, make your own luck. This last part is simple. Be proactive. Show up for conferences, go to seminars, join networking groups and talk to people in the industry. I heard this in a podcast once and it's perfect. Your role is to open up every door possible. Let the world close the doors you're not meant to walk through. Your job is to just walk through the ones that remain open. People say I was lucky with my first job, maybe, but before that lucky day, I had already shown up at 20 other companies. So if I quit at the 19th, I would miss the 20th. And every conversation made me better. I learned what you say. I got calmer. I wasn't waiting for luck. I was increasing it. So that's the final step. Put your pretty face out there and make your own luck.